Yeah, episode 6, Ore Generation. In this episode, we'll be working on getting our ore to generate in the world. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new class in the block package. And this is going to be named Ore Block Base. And then inside of that, we're going to create a public static enum. And we're going to call that origin dimension. And the first item will be none. Second item will be overworld. Third item will be nether. Fourth item will be labeled both. And then put a semicolon and below that make a public list of filler block type and call that get filler block and import list from java util list and that's going to return a uh, shorthand if statement that's going to say if this equals overworld then it's going to return an arrays dot as list filler block type dot natural stone else this equals nether then it's going to return arrays dot as list filler block type dot nether rack and then else if again this equals both then we'll want to return an arrays dot as list and it's going to return a filler block dot filler block type dot nether rack and a filler block dot type dot uh, natural stone and then else if none of those are available then return null <clears throat> and we just put that all on one line as a shorthand if else statement and then we'll create a variable for list block and call it blocks. And now we'll create our constructor. And this will have a string for a name, properties for a property. And it'll have an or uh, generation dimension. And we'll call that dimension. It'll have an in, uh, integer for the chance. It'll have an integer for how many blocks in a vein, an integer for the minimum height that it can spawn and the maximum height. And we'll import block from minecraft.blocks.block .block and properties from minecraft.blocks.properties. And now we'll set blocks equal to another shorthand if statement would be dimension equals or gen dimension dot both then we will return we will do an arrays dot as list and we'll create a new block base with the name and then we'll append a underscore overworld onto the name and we'll throw in the properties and then we'll do it again so comma and just copy and paste that and change it to the nether and then we'll do an else if dimension equals overworld then we'll return a raise dot as list new block base name append underscore overworld and then the properties then we'll copy and paste that and change it to nether and dimension dot nether and then at the very end we'll just say else return null because it needs a an else
And now we're going to create a public getter or we're going to create the or generation method, which is going to take a list of a block, call it block. And it's going to take the same properties as the constructor. So just copy and paste those right into there. And then we'll check again if dimension equals or gen dimension dot none or if blocks returns null, then we will return out of this. Make sure to do that at the very beginning of the method. <clears throat> and we'll create a integer called index and set it to zero. Then we'll do a for each loop through filler block types, call it filler, and we'll loop through the dimension.get filler block. <clears throat> And then we'll loop through the biomes by doing biome biome and we'll get the forge registry dot biomes and we'll import that by doing control shift O. And then we'll say biome dot add feature and it's going to be a decoration dot underground ores. And as the configured feature, we'll set it to biome dot create decorated feature and then we'll do feature dot or for the config we'll set it up for a new or feature config the targets going to be the filler the block state will be blocks dot get index dot get state default state and the size will be the chance For the placement, we'll do placement dot count range. For the placement configuration, we'll do a new count range config, and then we'll do the blocks in vain, the min height zero the max height and then we'll import all of that and then after that for loop in between the other for loop you're going to want to do index plus plus And now we're going to create a getter for our block list. So we're going to do public list block, get blocks, and then we'll just return blocks. Now we'll go to our block list class. And we'll create a new constructor. And this will take in a list block and we'll call it block <clears throat> and we'll import that from Java util and we'll change our property from a block block to a list block block and that will cause a few errors but we'll just change that to erase dot as list and put in block and do that for the other two as well and then change the getter to a list of block. <clears throat> and under get display name, we'll do block dot get index and add int index as a parameter and do that for the other two as well. The properties will leave the same for the different variants of the blocks. And under the third constructor, we'll do this dot block equals block.
And then up in our variable, we'll change it to a new or block base. And we'll import that. Then we'll do at the very end dot get blocks. And we'll set the name as tutorial underscore or. And here, for some reason, Eclipse will not let me import it using the shortcut. So I had to go up and manually import it into the import section. If this happens to you, just go up, copy the import and add or block base to it. And now it's showing up with the autocomplete and I'll put in the or gen dimension. and we'll set that as both. If you wanted it to only spawn in the nether or overworld, you could specify that there. We'll set the chance to 32, the vein to 16, the minimum height to two and maximum height to 75, just so it's incredibly easy to find it. If you were doing this normally, you'd set those numbers to a lot lower, unless it was a very common item. And then in the main class where we register our blocks, we're going to create another for loop that loops through the blocks in our block list. And then we will register that block. All right, and here I just opened up a Photoshop file that was included in the assets that I left in the description in previous videos. And it's just called an ors.psd. And here I'm just changing the or color. I was going to make it a red as we did with the actual ingot, but I figured it would get lost, especially in the nether. So I made it a very bright green. And here I'm opening up the folder for the block textures, copying it, pasting it there. And then we'll call it tutorial underscore ors underscore nether. And then I'll hide the nether and I'll save it again. And we'll call it tutorial underscore or underscore overworld and save it. And here I'm just creating the models we're doing the exact same thing that we did when we created our custom block. So I'm not going to explain it as in depth as I did then.
Uh, right in here, I'm just adding the recipes. So I'm changing it from the recipes tutorial from tutorial underscore or, and I'm just adding the overworld to that. And then we'll copy and paste it and do it again for the nether. And here I'll just add the block drops for each item. All right, and here I just went back into the ore block base and I made sure to add the call to the ore generation method. And an easy way to do that is by doing control space. And because we use the same variables for both, it will autofill. And there you go. Now we can run uh, the Gradle task and I'm just going to fast forward through this. And here I'm just going in, deleting our old world and creating a new one. And as you can see, both of our ores have been successfully added to the game. And now I'm just going into spectator, going down to some mines to see if it is there. And there is our overworld ore. And again, the spawn rate is uh, dramatically increased. And now I'm just going to make a nether portal to go to the nether. Something to note, with the nether, um, zero is significantly lower and world height 
is the nether builds to world height where the overworld has air. So as you can see, when I spawn in here, I'm above where I set the spawn rate to be, the max height to be. So if you wanted to be in the nether, I would recommend setting it to spawn from world floor to world ceiling. And you can do that a number of ways, either by manually entering the default, which is 512. And because it would only spawn near, uh, it would only spawn near uh, nether rack or stone, it would not affect the overworld as much. But as you can see, it is now correctly spawning in both the nether and overworld. So now I'm just grabbing a blast furnace and furnace to show that they can now be smelted into the tutorial ingot. But that is the end of this episode. I hope you enjoy. 